everybody for attending. This presentation as well as the, or this presentation will be recorded and will be available on the GPIC area of the Grand Erie site after, uh, probably not till at least tomorrow, just the way things go. Um, also, I believe that the PowerPoint presentations that we will see tonight will also be available on that link as well. Um, I would like to welcome everybody here tonight and I would invite uh, uh, Robin Stats, who's the new Principal for Indigenous Education. If I got the title right, close. Close. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have the land acknowledgement statement in front of sorry, me. That's no share. sorry. That'll be Susan Gibson first. Okay. And then and then we'll talk to you. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's my privilege to share the land acknowledgement tonight. So the Grand Erie District School Board recognizes the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe as the tra traditional people of this territory. We acknowledge and give gratitude to the Indigenous people for sharing these lands in order for us to continue our work here today. Thank you very much, Trustee Gibson. And now, I'm sorry, we can turn it over to, um, to Robin Stats. And if I could ask everybody to um, turn your video off, uh, just so we can pay attention to the presenter. If you're asking questions at the end, maybe we could turn our video on or write it in the chat at that time. Thank you. Okay, Sego Jishkogo Nye Young Yat Jayat Nation Stewan Odunyo. Welcome, Pamela, um, Dr. Pamela Toulouse. Uh, I need for you to know before I share some information in in um, welcoming you that I've been a fan for the duration of my career. So I, I just want to share that before I introduce you. But I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Pamela Toulouse. She is an educator for excess of 25 years um, in the area of K-12 teacher education. She's an Ojibwe from the Odawa Nation, from the Sagamuk Anishinaabek community. Um, she has been the author of an excess of 50 books is the amount I found. What is the true correct number though, Pamela? I bet you she knows. <laughs> Yeah, so I have over, I've published over um, now over 60 resources, right. and those are uh, books, uh, articles, chapters in books, webinars, curriculum documents, policy documents, like the whole, the whole range in education. So, so, so you need to know you were also um, part of my master's thesis when I did my master's thesis as well. Um, a lot of her works from the Ministry of Education I've used throughout the years. In her works, she addresses the need um, for the abundance of in, in, um, innovations by the Indigenous population of Turtle Island um, need to be recognized. Some of her most recent works are The Truth and Reconciliation in Canadian Schools, which is on my bookshelf in, in all of the schools at Six Nations and surrounding communities. Oh, watch uh, she, she also talks about Eli's school for the parents. Do you want to watch? I think somebody yeah. needs to mute their mic there. I'm not sure. I think it might be somebody just joining us. But I'll just continue. Um, again, education and rec reconciliation have been key topics of her most recent works. Um, throughout the years, I think some of the most memorable throughout my career have been um, her works on the Seven Grandfathers teachings, which I think is, is wonderful in sharing um, some of the culture from her community. Identity and self-esteem have also been a key role in the books that she has authored. And um, i just like to take this time today to welcome you to um, the Grand Erie District School Board and look forward to your talk this evening. Welcome. All right there, my good friends. So first of all, I really want to say uh, meow to, uh, to Robin. You know, those, those thoughts, you know, two-leggeds. They got some good stuff going on there down in Haudenosaunee territory. Because, you know, I always know by the last name which nation uh, folks come from. And, you know, knowing a bit about the Stotts, you know, you know, this is, uh, you know, a family line that continues to like, you know, give and enhance not just in education, but in health. 
and like, you know, all across, like, you know, the gamut of uh, living a good life, right? And so that's where I would like to start and to say niawa to Robin, because really, you know, right now I'm a virtual visitor into your area as well, into your territory. So my good friends out there, we're going to start off there in a good way. And so what I would like you to do, my friends, is that even if you don't have your camera on, and it's better to keep your camera off anyway, okay? It's better to keep it off, so don't worry about it. So what I'm going to ask you to do, my beautiful friends, is this. I'm going to ask you to say these good words, okay? These good, good words. I want you to say, say go. So try it with me. Say go. Because that, my beautiful friends, of course, is ungwe, hungwe. That comes from Robin's community, and that is their way of saying hello. Then I want you to say Andi, which is, again, my way, Nishnab, a yeah, way of saying hello this evening. So, my wonderful friends, okay? So, you're going to be involved here, right? You're probably thinking like, oh, Dr. Pam, I came here to listen, have some coffee, sit back, and enjoy my evening. But, my friends, we're going to be using our little chat side. You're going to be typing messages. We're going to be sharing. You're going to collect some questions and you're going to be doing activities. And I will guide you in them, my beautiful friends. So, gonna start. So really, what is like, you know, equitable education, okay? So when you think about, again, K to 12, especially, and you think about schools that are committed to equity, right? So committed to equity and inclusion, okay? So what is kind of like the first thought that comes to mind, right? So is it, um, you know, a school that's based upon character education values of respect? Is it about listening? Is it about, what is it about? Courage, bravery? I don't know. So what I want you gorgeous folks to do is go to the chat right now. When you think about a school that is committed to equity, you know, what are words that would describe it? What would, you know, students be doing? All right, so go to the chat. Don't be There's afraid, no type a message, you can do it. You can do it, my beautiful friends. All right, so what would that be? And if you're like, you know what, my beautiful friend, I am too shy, I don't know what to do, that's okay too. But again, type your message. So what would, you know, a school, okay? So what would a K to 12 school, right? Committed to equity, you know, committed to equity look like, all right? So give me some words, my friends, and I've got it right in the chat. I've got it in the chat, okay? The question, so start putting it in there. Fair treatment, yes, safe and comfortable for all. Now, my good friends, celebrating cultures, yes, recognizing difference, you know, students being able to see themselves in the space and in the curriculum, a celebration of what is important, all right? So, my beautiful friends, Again, accepting and open, right? Again, diversity. And that it would be engaging and also the teaching and assessing would be engaging and diverse where student voices heard and actioned on, right? So again, my my beautiful friends here tonight, my beautiful Nietzsche already, you know, you got it going on. You think that we finished this presentation already. But my beautiful friends, I'm going to add a little bit more to what equitable education, you know, can look like, you know, and you know what, you've got these wonderful educators already there, committed people, this wonderful, again, parent, you know, again, involvement committee. So what can it look like, right? What can it look like? So my friends, an equitable education in K to 12 would also include the contributions of indigenous peoples to the world. So I'm going to show you something, okay? I'm going to show you something. And this is what it looks like. I want you to try it at home, okay? Try it at home, even with your cameras off. Show me what a circle looks like. Show me what a circle looks like. My head is almost like a full circle. My cheeks are puffing out because over the past year, I've been staying home and enjoying food finally, my friends, enjoying all the good munchies that I can make, okay? But show me what a circle looks like. So an equitable education is based in this concept of holism. And Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabek people, Meshkigawik people, Indigenous peoples, we are very diverse, right? We're different, but there are certain things and ways of knowing that bind us together. And what is it? It's a commitment to holism and to understanding, you know, the whole person, the whole child, it's connections to land, connection to culture, connection to language. 
And that, my friends, is also what embodies an equitable education. So you got the beautiful Haudenosaunee nations down south there. You've also got my nations, Nishnabek, Metis nations, you know, urban uh, indigenous populations. So my beautiful friends, right? So equitable education, it's about a shared story, safe spaces. And all of you, you know, I'm taking a look, you know, in the chat. Yeah, it's about relationships and student voice. And this is what I absolutely love because we're already starting from a common space about what equitable education can look like. Now, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, my friends, all right? I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. If my Wi-Fi blips, don't worry. I'll only be gone for 40 seconds and then I will be back, okay? So don't worry. This happens here for some reason. They're trying to improve the lines here in my city, all right? But I will be back. So, Indigenous peoples. Now, what I want you to do, okay, I want you to do, if you're a fan, if you are a fan, of the Toronto Maple Leafs, I want you to put it in uh, the chat, okay? Put it in the chat, my friends, all right? If you're a fan, okay? And if you're not, let us know. Let us know that you're not a fan. Don't be afraid, put it in the chat, okay? So are you a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs? And this will all make sense, my friends. <laughs> so are you a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs? So I'm gonna put the question there, all right? Oh, oh, Robin Stotts. All right. Are you a fan of the Maple Leafs? One yes, one no. No, I'm a Canucks fan. Ooh, Lorraine, absolutely a fan. Oh, my goodness, Joe, you're going to start an all-out war saying no. <laughs> all right. So, my beautiful friends, all right. So, why do I start with that, right? Why do I start with the Toronto Maple Leafs? So here's something, you know, that that is really a contribution that comes from our people. And it comes from Algonquin people, right? And people are like, oh, I'm like indifferent, not a big hockey fan, things like that. Well, if you're a Raptors fan, that's also a contribution, the sport that we also gave to the world. So my beautiful friends. So what it is, is that hockey is actually a sport that came from Algonquin women. So the initial, like, you know, the initial sport itself came from, you know, um, Jesuits observing Algonquin women playing the sport. So some people would say, well, wasn't it just field hockey? Well, no, this was ha actually happening on an ice surface. So my friends, I'm also going to give you the resource later on of where you can access that information. And it's this really cool series called um, American Indian Contributions to the World. And it's from these amazing authors called Kiyoki and Porterfield. And they wrote this entire encyclopedia anthology and like collected in a respectful way, the stories and archival documents from the 500 nations on Turtle Island, you know, to be able to, you know, showcase all the gifts that we have given and that we continue to give. Now, my beautiful friends, all right? Now, I'm gonna go to my presentation here. Now there's, you know, you're looking at that, you're saying, oh, look at her and that pro pick here, that pro pick, not a day over 30. I'd like to share with you, my friends, that as of tomorrow, I am officially retired, eh? I'm officially retired, I know what you're saying. How could she be retired, you know? She's only like, you know, 30. But anyways, my beautiful friends, so, we started off, right, with the acknowledgement of the territory, the traditional territory. And I'm going to tell you something. There's all kinds of controversy ab about this. But when it comes to an equitable education, it is absolutely critical that the acknowledgement of the traditional territories always be present. So here is my opinion, okay, my opinion. But I'm going to tell you what has to go with that acknowledgement. So, and I'm gonna start it off in a good way as well. So I am a virtual visitor to Grand Erie right now. I'm visiting, visiting through my teams and you know, through the internet, but I am a virtual visitor. So even though I'm in a schnob and my people are also rooted there, I'm still visiting again, like, you know, the territory of a different group of Anishinaabek and also of the Haudenosaunee. So I'm a virtual visitor. So I say miigwech, you know, for allowing me to be a virtual visitor, right? And that is again about allowing me to be a virtual visitor. And the question that always has to follow that is, well, what does being a virtual visitor into the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and the Nishnabek peoples, Nishnabek peoples in Grand Erie compel me to do, right? What does it compel me to do? 
And what it compels me to do, my beautiful friends, is that it compels me, you know, to proceed this evening in a good way by paying homage, uh, paying homage to the gifts of the Haudenosaunee and the Schnabek people from that territory. Not only that, it also compels me to engage with all of you beautiful Nietzsche's, you know, that are at the other side of this screen, that have taken the time this evening to be here and to be present. It compels me to answer your questions in a good way, but it also compels me to have the ability to say, I don't know, right? I don't know. And that's a really hard word to say, okay? Hard word to say. So I'm gonna go to the next one, okay? So again, let me know, let me know. Hopefully you can see my pre my presentation, you know, in like, you know, where you're viewing from. But I really wanna start with this, okay? So Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee. So here's some of the gifts that we gave to the world. So while I'm doing this, this is your job, my beautiful friends, okay? So this is your job. You need to identify one or two gifts that you're like, oh my goodness, I did not know that. Or, oh my goodness, I use that every day. Or else, oh my goodness, I need to learn something more about that, okay? So get ready. So I'm gonna brighten the chat what your job is, all right? What your job is. So you are going to select one or two, okay, contributions or gifts that you use every day or are interested in or never knew about. You're like, I never knew this, okay? I never knew, all right? So you already know one, hockey, all right? Algonquin women, all right, were the ones that were first, uh, you know, reported to be playing the game that is now known as hockey. And the reason why I ask, I don't mean to break you Leafs fans' hearts, Okay, I don't mean to, all right? Algonquin women, yes, originated the sport known now known as hockey, but do not blame our nations for the fact that even though the Leafs have finally made it to the playoffs, that they probably won't make it, all right? All right, I shed tears. My dad's a big fan. I'm not, I'm a Canucks fan. Um, so anyways, all right, and those are fighting words, my friends. But so again, hockey, right? Hockey, that sport came from our people. So Nishnabek, what did we give to the world? We gave maple syrup, megaphones, not only that, moccasins, shovels, you know, obstetrics, or else the gift of, you know, the how to deliver babies in a safe way, and how to do post, like pre and postnatal care. We also gave, right? We also gave um, soft drink ingredients. Oh my goodness, uses maple syrup every day and eats lots of beans, right? <laughs> well, Yes, beans are very good. Yeah, they're very good. Very good for the GI tract, period. Thank goodness. But not only that, right? We also gave soft drink ingredients to the world. So if you ever drink Dr. Pepper, which is, again, owned by the Pepsi-Cola company, actually, Dr. Pepper comes directly, again, from the Anishinaabek people. Because we had our own form of Dr. Pepper, my friends, and we made it from, again, our own mineral waters, and we used, like, wintergreen and birch to create this root beer um, drink. And what happened was, is that because we were not allowed, okay, legally, we were not allowed, Indigenous peoples were not allowed legally, this is part of the history of Canada, colonial history, we were not allowed to patent anything, okay, because we weren't even allowed to vote until the 60s. So we weren't allowed to patent anything. So any of our ideas could be taken by non-Indigenous, again, individuals or corporations, and they could patent it because they had the legal right to, but we did not. So that's how a lot of these things, you know, again, like, you know, were, again, absorbed by others and then, again, taken as their ideas. So that's why I recommend the Encyclopedia of American Indian Contributions to the World, my friends, by Keoki and Porterfield, because... It's 10,000 years of innovations and inventions, and they did their research. They had good connections to Turtle Island people. Now, Haudenosaunee, oh, that beautiful Robin Stutz, you know, that beautiful Robin who started us off too in a good way. Well, Robin's people, right? You know, amazing Haudenosaunee people gave to the world the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash. Not only that, they gave the sport of lacrosse, a woman's rights, right? Because they have a very beautiful, again, matriarchal clan system. But not only that, we're also the greatest influencers on the U.S. Constitution when it works well, right? When it works well. So the Haudenosaunee Great Law of Peace 
was actually, you know, the model for, again, the U.S. Constitution. Okay, so again, you take a look even at the dollar bill, the U.S. dollar bill. What do you see there right on the dollar bill? You see the bundle of arrows. Who does the bundle of arrows belong to? Robin Stotts, you can answer that for me. It is your people. <laughs> so not only that, the three sisters, right? So I'm going to tell you about this. So what was really neat is that the three sisters, right, this particular gift, they were always planted in a circle, okay, always planted in a circle. Because what happened is that those three plants thrived together. You had the corn stalk that went up. You had the beans that could crawl up that stalk so that they too would prosper. You had the squash that, you know, that would go along the bottom. And what they would do is they would make sure that the soil was kept at a certain level of alkalineness so that everything can grow together in a good way. But what happened was, right, so again, three sisters. So we again, Haudenosaunee, beautiful way of planting. But what happened is, is that with the creation of reserves and uh, the Reserves Act, right? So again, with the creation of reserves, what ends up happening, my wonderful friends, is this, is that, you know, that all of a sudden the reserves are created and then we're forced to actually do our planting and Haudenosaunee, this happened to our beautiful brothers and sisters, brothers, brothers, sisters, sisters, however we self-identify in the, again, like, you know, in the territory, they were then told to plant in rows, right? So everything, you're gonna plant rows of corn, rows of squash and rows of beans and what happened was they didn't thrive well they didn't thrive because that traditional knowledge was not valued so that is what happened but those are the gifts we gave to the world so part of an equitable education is including those gifts my friends but not only including those gifts but providing the story and the context that goes with it and understanding why it is we don't know this today, right? So I'm gonna to go to the next one, beautiful friends, Metis and Inuit. Now, those are some absolutely, you know, off the hook, absolutely lit snow goggles, all right, snow goggles. So beautiful friends, Inuit people, innovative, right? So take a look, that figure is an actual, like, you know, it's not a replica, it's an actual original example of traditional Inuit snow goggles. So they were the first ones to have sunglasses, you know, because, you know, living like, you know, amongst all of the snow and ice, you know, they needed to have it, they needed to, because you know what, when you're around all of that whiteness, right, is that it can cause snow blindness. So they knew, they knew, they were like, you know what, this is our story. And we know how to harness the land and to live again in, uh, again, in harmony with it. So our Metis, right, our Metis, again, our beautiful Indigenous peoples, again, made so many contributions, again, you know, again, to the world and especially to Canadian culture and society. They invented the York boat, all right? that, you know, could cross large bodies of water. Not only that, it was essential to trade from the very beginning of the, you know, of this country's establishment when it was first Upper and Lower Canada. So not only that, right, it was also, again, the Métis women, right, the Métis women that were often the interpreters between, you know, their husbands and the nations. They were these beautiful mediators, right? So this is what they did. So again, Métis people and still all these wonderful contributions today. So my beautiful friends, I am going to stop there because now I'm going to put a task for you. So I'm going to go right to the meeting chat, but I'm going to tell you what this task is at the same time. I'm going to tell you what it is, my beautiful friends. All right. So here's what it is. You, okay, have the choice. Okay. You have the choice. And the choice is this. Okay. The choice is this. Okay. Is one. Okay. <laughs> all right. To select. All right, to select an innovation that shocks you, okay? You're like, never knew, shocks me, can't believe it. Yeah, how come I never knew this? Or two, all right, to select an innovation, all right, to select an innovation that you cannot, cannot live without, okay? That you cannot live without. And I'm not saying Netflix, okay? We did not create Netflix. So you know what? Uh, get it out of your mind right now, my beautiful friends. Not Netflix, okay? So number one, to select an innovation that shocks you. Two, select an innovation that you cannot live without. Or three, okay, to select an innovation, all right? To select an innovation 
that, okay, that you think, okay, students need to know. All right, those are your three choices, okay? So those are your choices, and I'm going to put those right into the chat, my beautiful friends. So as I do this presentation, so you have the choice. Select an innovation that shocks you. Select an innovation that you cannot live without. Select an innovation that you think students need to know about, right? And not only that, if you're a student here, select an innovation that you're like, hey, this is an innovation that my teacher needs to know, <laughs> right? So, and I love that. Now, what I would like you to do, my friends, at this point is you're gonna do this, okay? It's not hard. Take your hands, take your hands. You're gonna take your hands because we are gonna do this activity together. I want you to take your hands and I want you to reach up to the sky, reach up to the sky. And I want you to wave up there. I want you to wave up to the sky because all of those beautiful rains are gonna come down and they're gonna clean all of the, again, all of the, the uh, garbage and all of the damage, you know, that us two leggeds have inflicted, okay? That we've inflicted. So what I want you to do is hands up, wave it out at the top, take your hands up, wave them out to the side, take your hands, put them to the screen. And even if, you're, if your camera's not on, wave at the screen and let everybody know that you are again so thankful for today. Now, beautiful friends. <laughs> so here we've got it, right? Turtle Island, Turtle Island. Oh, Turtle Island, where are you, right? Where are you? So Turtle Island is again, North America, the Mesoamericas and the Circum-Caribbean, right? And 500 nations, a little over 500 nations live on Turtle Island. I'm Nishnabe and I'm only one out of 500 nations. Our beautiful Robin Stotts and the Stotts family is also one out of, again, okay, is also one out of the 500. Now, someone else, okay, has uh, started sharing, my friend. So I'm not sure what happened. So I'm gonna request some control here, request some control. <laughs> So now here it is. So I'm gonna go right back to it. So I've got control here again, you know, so you can see the presentation, beautiful friends. So you can see it right there, right? We got the Arctic, our Arctic nations, beautiful indigenous nations, our Inuit and our Diné again, you know, two leggeds that live in the North and that thrive up there. So not only that, so what did they give? You take a look, right? Portable space heaters, right? The idea, portable space heaters, or heaters what they would do is they would actually take, you know, animal fat, right, seal fat, put it in containers and use that as a heating source, right? Makes sense to me. It's a portable space heater. Kayaks, right? I couldn't live without them. You know, I'm an outdoors person. I love out the outdoors. I love the water. Not only that, snowshoes. You take a look at the California Indigenous Nations, right? So again, beautiful nations. What did they give to the world? Detergents, hair conditioners, stretchers, chewing gum, chemical fishing, Circum Caribbean, barbecues, right? Thank goodness, thank you for barbecues. Perfect timing, because it's now barbecue season up here in the North, besides black fly season right now. But anyways, they gave cigars and hammocks. You see the Great Basin, again, oral contraception they gave to the world, and all of these wonderful things, chia sage, you know, chia sage. And you're probably thinking like, you know, ch -ch -ch chia, you know, so something similar to that, but not quite. <laughs> and Great Plains gave to the world hacky sacks, right? Commonly known as foot bags. And why? There's always a purpose, right? So hacky sacks. So what would happen is that our wonderful, again, like, you know, again, our, our two-legged individuals that identified as female, right? So that identified as female, what they would do is they would have these amazing contests with, with their foot bags. And what they did is they did it. It was really about, it was about health and fitness. Because, you know, you think about it, right, is that these, there was always times for recreation too. And that those foot bags were made out of the stomachs of animals and they would use dyes to make beautiful patterns on their hacky sacks. And that those also, again, were a form of exercise, but a form of community because they would have fun tournaments. And it was, again, those two legs that identified as female. So beautiful friends, I'm gonna go to the next one, okay? Now, take a look at this one. Da, 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 da. So the, this one I love because there's going to be many people that will argue with me and it's okay. All right. It's all right. So the Mesoamericans, right? So again, 
indigenous peoples in the Mesoamericas. So that's, you know, if we're looking at geography, it's like, you know, the bottom of Turtle Island, right? The bottom of Turtle Island. So, you know, the Mesoamericas there, we've got like, you know, North America, and then you've got like, you know, Circum-Caribbean and then the Mesoamericas. So my beautiful friends, the Mesoamericans gave the sport of basketball to the world. Now, many of you will be like, yes, no, it wasn't. It was John Naismith. Okay. No. Well, there's some truth to that. Naismith actually provided, you know, the rules of the game and should be credited with this particular adaptation of the sport now known as basketball. But basketball in the Mesoamericas, they played for days and they played it to the death. All right. So anyways, WNBA, NBA does not hold a candle. <laughs> North, Northeast. Yeah. So that's my nation, my beautiful friends. Now, Northeast, we gave to the world bunk beds and potato chips. Thank goodness. All right. <laughs> Hockey, as I said, Algonquin women. The sport of lacrosse, the Craters game. And that comes from the Haudenosaunee people. And that is the people of our beautiful Robin Stotts. So they gave that to the world. And keep on taking a look, right? So take a look. So remember, my friends, you're looking for these things, okay? You have a choice. Number one, the innovation that you're shocked by. Number two, the innovation you can't live without. And three, the innovation that you think that students need to learn about. And if you're a young person, a young adult here, and you're like, you know what? Here's the innovation that I think that all you need to know about. You go right ahead. You let us know. You let us know. So we go on down, right? We look at, again, the Northwest Coast, right? And again, those beautiful nations, the Ithacatma, the Stolo, you know, um, the Haida. What did they give to the world? They gave architects, boxes, hemostat, which really is a tool used in surgery to control bleeding. They gave x-ray art and so many other cool things to the world. Plateau, embroidery, fringed clothing, okay, looms, so many things. Southeast, again, those nations gave to the world calendars, civic centers, <clears throat> and seawalls, right? Makes sense. You're living on the Florida coast, friends. You needed to have a seawall, you know, so that it would not erode, again, like, you know, your land, right? So that's what they did. Southwest, my beautiful friends, of course, right? of course, that what they would do, right? So what they would do is that they would, um, they actually had one of the largest apartment complexes. So you can Google it on your own. If you put in the word Chaco Canyon or Pueblo Benito, you will see an apartment complex in the shape of that beautiful sacred circle, my friends. Beautiful sacred circle. And what it is, is that it housed 10,000 indigenous peoples and it had its own sewage and irrigation systems built within those structures, okay? You can go take a look on your own. So our subarctic, oh, thank goodness, right? Thank goodness. We also had, my beautiful friends, insect bite remedies. And when you're on the subarctic, like where we are, you know, in north of here in Cree territory, my goodness, you gotta have those remedies. So I'm gonna go to the next one. I'm gonna give you a new task, okay, a new task. And I'm going to ask you, okay, so I'm going to ask you, my beautiful friends, first of all, all right, I'm going to ask you, okay, and you can let me know in the chat, what do you do, okay, to keep yourself, okay, physically, physically sound, now, or physically balanced. So, an example, an example, okay, so you can write it in the chat. Do you monitor for example your sleep okay because that's a physical thing do you again monitor your physical activity your food like what is it again like eat right do you sleep enough you know do you take good deep breaths so what is it you know so take a look so i want you to put it right into the chat let people know how you're taking care of yourself physically because this is also leading into my friends leading into again equitable education and approaching things from a sacred circle perspective now again so let folks know we got people walking and biking oh joe now you're just bragging joe's like oh i can play fastball you know oh mr joe i have to tell you i used to play fastball too yeah yeah and i used to play i used to be like a shortstop and a right fielder at one time <laughs> so my beautiful friends so we've got it here 
Again, water intake, staying hydrated, getting good sleep, right? So those are physical things. Now we're gonna go to the next one and I'm gonna have you think about it, okay? As we go through, all right? So now you're writing the physical of like, you know, how it is that you take care of you. Now, emotionally, so emotionally, so I'm going to give you an example and you can put it in the chat only if you feel that, you know, you feel safe to. You don't have to if you don't want to. So when I think about the emotional aspect of the two legged and we are like, you know, the two legged. All right. So when I think about the emotional aspect, what this means to me is what do you do for self care? So self care in terms of ensuring that you know that you you feel well that you feel balanced. So I'm not talking about going for that walk or getting that sleep. Like you know, do you reach out to a friend? You know, do you allow yourself to binge on Netflix? You know, whatever it is. Do you read a book? You know, do you again like you know have like you know a Zoom dinner? You know, with people. Do you like go outside and meditate or else just watch, you know, the birds in a bird feeder? I don't know. Right. But what do you do? You know, do you, you know, like, you know, um, you know, learn to like, you know, learn the gifts from your animals. I don't know what it is, but what is it that you do for your emotional health? OK. Ah, time with friends and all things Sudoku. Right. So different puzzles, things that challenge our mind, but kept, keep us balanced. Right. Puzzles, journaling. Right being mindfulness whoo hot tub and danielle you're speaking my language because i am a water baby okay again journal visit you need to do this right we are in a pandemic right now a global pandemic we know this global pandemic called COVID 19 but we're also in a global pandemic of isolation and loneliness so this is why you know the emotional is so key the other part of this is that absolutely, you know, definitely, yes, hot tubbing. I love it because I love a good sauna. Yeah, sauna, I love the water. So the other thing is too, my beautiful friends, all right? The other thing is this, is that there are other aspects when it comes to holism. There's the intellectual and the spiritual. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and how we would see it present in an equitable, again, you know, equitable space in K to 12, okay? So we're gonna see how it goes. So, and I'm gonna show you how we can all relate to this. So I'm gonna go to the next one and I call it holism, all right? You're probably like, oh my goodness, Dr. Pam, why would you spell it with a WH, all right, WH? So there is, you know, there's definitely some reasons why, right? There's definitely some reasons why. And the reason why, my friends, that I often do, like, you know, the holism part is, you know, again, for me, the whole word of holism, I look at root words, right? So I look at root words. And if we think about holism, the root word is whole, W-H-O-L-E. Now, the other way, it's holism, H-O-L, E. So it's implied, right? A lot of people, well, if you go back, you know, and you take a look at the word holism, the H-O-L-E, there's a different meaning. But when we look at it in today's context, I would prefer to go with the W-H because it tells me that something is whole. So we're going to move forward in this sacred circle, okay? So what would this look like, okay? What would this look like in a K-12 setting? And what does it look like, again, in our own lives? So your challenge is to think about this, okay? Think about this. So I'm going to give you the definition of spiritual from my perspective, okay, from my own work and from my own relations, my own relationships. So the spiritual refers to this ability to have, again, positive and deeper connections with all living things. So what that means, right, in the context of a K-12 classroom is that we promote activities where our learners have deeper connections you know, more than just with the other two leggings, all right? So more than like, you know, relationships with just human beings, that we encourage relationships with the land, with Mother Earth and her children, and that they start to have this perspective, right? Exactly, Danielle, land-based learning, where they have this connection, you know, that goes deeper, where they understand their food sources, where there's a connection to food sources, now, again, so my presentation has gone, my friends, and it's back, and there is my face. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for approval to get my thing back, right? So now I've got it back again. Here we go. 
I'm going to take control here, folks. Take control. So what it is, right? So that's what the spiritual is. But what does it look like? So you've got the wonderful Robin Stotts there. Not only that, you have all kinds of like, you know, beautiful indigenous language teachers. You have knowledge keepers. These are the individuals, you know, that are that can provide, you know, those teachings in a good way. But I'm going to give you a safe entry point, my friends, a safe entry point for, um, you know, how to, again, incorporate indigenous innovations in a good way. So, you know, Robin is your, your point of contact, you know, but the other thing is to use again, to use, and I'm just going to go back. Okay. I'm going to go back in my slide. Um, one of the things that you can do, my beautiful friends, is this, you can definitely, you know, use again, um, literature. So books, literature is a safe entry point. Things like, you know, David Robertson's When We Were Alone, Louise Erdrich's, you know, again, the Birch Bark House, which is a beautiful story for grade six. You know, all of these beautiful stories. And I always recommend, my friends, okay, I'm going to always recommend. And it used to be owned by Jeff Burnham, again, from that was from uh, Six Nations. But I always recommend goodminds.com. And the reason being is that, can I put it in the chat? Um, accessing books from goodminds.com are really great because their website filters it um, again by nation or by teaching or by grade. And not only that, they actually have a system in place where those books are vetted ahead of time, right? So what they do is they vet it to make sure that they're authentic, that they're relevant, and that they're not the perpetuation of stereotypes and myths. So I always say go with that. So that is a safe entry point. Another safe entry point is the innovations, right? Is to say, listen, here's these beautiful gifts, you know, that again, Indigenous peoples gave to the world that we continue to benefit from. And that is something so critical, again, to highlight. So I'm going to go to the next one, my wonderful friends, okay? And that is the physical. So this is the type of, again, strategies that are used, again, <clears throat> in the classroom. So again, it's like, you know, how do you move? Is there kinesthetics? Is it group oriented? What is it? You know, how do you arrange your space in a K to 12 classroom, even in a virtual setting? So how do you do that, right? So do you do collaborative activities, interactive ones? Do you use differentiated instruction? Are there visual and hands-on activities, right? So is there, not only that, you know, is it also, um, again, are there some really interesting minds-on activities? An introduction, you know, to the class or else, you know, to the subject that, you know, connects directly, not only to the expectations, but to the student. So it's just like as an example, when I asked you about the physical things you're doing, you know, so you have that connection Then I talk about, okay, well, this is what the physical would look like in the classroom. Now, I am gonna give you another wonderful task pretty soon, my friends, okay? And this is at the emotional, the emotional. I love this one, okay? In the chat, I'm gonna give you your task. Now, the emotional, okay? So th this is what it's going to be. I'm gonna put it right in the chat for you. So what makes you laugh, okay? Or who makes you laugh? Again, so we come with this from a good frame of mind and a respectful frame of mind. So what makes you laugh, my friends? Type it, okay? Put it in the chat, because I would like to know, all right? Yes, this inquiring mind would like to know. Okay, so let me know. What makes you laugh? And I'm going to put a couple of mine, okay, in there as well, so you get to know me a bit. Uh, oh, I like <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. Your fiancé and son, when they tease each other, good. Yeah, and that's the way it should be. Uh, my fur kids, for sure. Uh, definitely my partner, again, makes me laugh. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the sign that was current, the sign wars currently in North Perth. My animals, I am loving this. Yes. So again, humor. So keep writing. What are these things that bring humor to your life and joy? Because that's really what it is, right? So Shit's Creek, believe me, comedy in my family. Susan, I am with you on Shit's Creek. I love it. Everybody's got kids and family and students in a good way. Yes, you are right. Trevor Noah has the most interesting take on the world, and I love it, love it. And he speaks multiple languages for real. Like, it's amazing. You know, again, again, Robin, my son in humility. So 
interesting. So you can keep writing in the chat and take a look at what each other has to say, okay? Because there's some amazing things that are being said. Now, again, Tom, your grandkids, and they better. It's like, you know what? You're like, okay, grandkitties, yeah. Yeah, you're with Papa now? Yeah, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah, Papa's going to take care of you and you're going to take care of Papa. And that's the way it should be. And it's like that in our nations. And so my beautiful friends, so me, Gwetch, grandkitties, yeah, nieces, nephews, right? So emotional, right? So this is what it would be like in a K-12 classroom as well, right? I love it. My cat makes me laugh. Yeah, so believe me. My dog makes, my dog is nearly in every Zoom call I have. You know, she's always there, but I had to put her away, tuck her away because she's she, she like, she loves the limelight. And I got it, you know, she's, she's just too much now. So what is it? So the emotional aspect, you know, of a classroom is really about, again, how it is that you build community. How do you build community in your classroom? How do you share, laugh, talk, and think critically together in K to 12? Do you have humor, right? How, do you have humor? And respectful humor is the key, right? So like in our communities, laughter and teasing is a cultural norm. It is a norm, um, again, respectful teasing. It is a norm that actually suggests that there is a level of trust, you know? So when we joke around with each other, it is a, it is, um, it is a familial tone. It is, um, it is a, a sign of trust, right? It's a sign of trust and it is a social norm. Do you have storytelling and group talk, you know? Do you use things like, you know, beyond just think, pair, share? Do you use, you know, wonderful strategies like jigsaw and lit circles? Try using a lit circle in mathematics, right? So that's what I mean by, by again, different types of group talk. So these are examples of the emotional aspect. So now I'm going to get to the next one, my beautiful friends, which is the intellectual. So how is it, right? How is it, you know, in K to 12, how do we actually take, right? How do we take content or else curriculum expectations? How do we take these curriculum expectations and organize our lessons, right? How do we make them accessible? Please make them accessible. And they are. So I have, um, you know, a little bit of insight. So the new math curriculum, I was really, um, uh, really honored because part of the new math curriculum, there's a pedagogical tool that's coming out with the new math curriculum. And the new math curriculum, I was one of the uh, supporters and writers of the pedagogical tool. So I gave the Anishinaabe version of, you know, of like, listen, if you're going to be teaching geometry and if this is your expectation, this is how you make it relevant to Anishinaabe kids, right? Because this is, you know, not only that, it also for non-Indigenous kids shows them a different way of knowing, right? And what is one of the biggest TRC calls to action? The TRC call to action is about having the ability, right? Having, um, again, the ability, you know, to relate to one another. So, you know, it's having that emotional intelligence. And I believe it's like, you know, it's the TRC call to action 62 something. But I know it's really about that, being able to connect and to advocate for each other. Because having that emotional connection is really key. So the intellectual, my friends. So do you have mini lessons, right? Are there mini lessons? And do those mini lessons have interactive and engaging activities that go with it? Do you have amazing procedures and routines, right? So that they're consistent. And do you, you know, make an attempt to use maybe indigenous languages as part of your procedures and routines? Could be as simple as like, you know what? Like, um, could be as simple as saying ani, uh, saying say go. It could be like, you know, nyaw. So when we're thankful in the Haudenosaunee, well, in Ongwahungwe, saying, you know, nyaw, which is thankful, or miigwech, which is, you know, again, thanks in Ojibwe, in the Shnabe. So it's using basic words, right? And taking like, you know, a look at all of the wonderful resources in the community, right? So who are the indigenous language teachers, the indigenous counselors, you know, who is it? And not only that, harnessing the resources like those beautiful books, you know, that can come from good minds and, you know, having these amazing book kits as well. So that's what it is now. Here's the big thing. So I want you to let me know this one, okay? So now this is your task, my beautiful friends. You got a job here, you got a job. So this is, again, the difference and one of the greatest value challenges. Oh my goodness. 
that are especially like, you know, again, that, that our indigenous kids are really facing, that they're facing. So I want you, as I go through, just to type in the chat, let me know which one that you see daily or weekly, okay? Daily or weekly. I'm gonna give you the first one, okay? The first one. So the technological represents the world we currently live in. So it's the technological represents the values that are really embraced by society and perpetuated through social media, okay? The traditional really represents a lot of those, um, again, those customs and values that Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, and Meshkigwik that uh, hold very dear. So again, our 500 nations hold, you know, the ones in the right column very dear. And, you know, what happens is, is that, you know, being, again, um, in a technological world, you know, there's this conflict because these values are at conflict all the time. So you let me know which one you see or experience. So here's the first one, technological value, right? Humor has its place, right? You can only laugh at certain times, okay? It has its place, all right? And, but for, again, the traditional value amongst indigenous peoples, humor is actually a sign of trust, okay? Let's go to the next one. Again, values, this is what our children and youth face all the time, right? And you're probably thinking, well, what if they were never raised in the culture? And I have another argument about that, okay? And it goes right down to a DNA genetic level, okay? It really does. And I'm going to talk about it afterwards. So not only that, okay, technological world focuses in on youth, right? You got to stay young, okay? You got to, you know, do this. You got to dye your hair. And it reminds me, I better go and do mine. Anyways, um, but it's like, you know, all of these things, you got to stay young. You know, it's youth that is valued. But in our traditional world, and it still is like this, our elders and Métis senators, that that is what's valued. The process of aging is what's valued. Not only that, talking versus silence, right? And it's right in the curriculum. It's right in the curriculum. So, the technological world views talking and being articulate as a sign of success, as a sign of a competency, right? But then meanwhile, in our traditional societies, silence and being quiet is actually quite valued. And that's, you know, again, our competency of someone who's actually quite a good communicator or someone that's silent and that can listen. Not only that, eye contact, right? If I can make eye contact with you, I must be telling the truth. <laughs> technological world right and it's you know it's very much set up like that court systems right yeah if i can look and i can you know if i can look up and you know look at the jury i must be telling the truth but a lot of our communities actually one of our traditional values is we don't make eye contact right so that's one of them not only that i'm going to get to the next one the individual versus the community so our technological world really promotes, again, the individual and then the one below it being competitive, right? Competitive. But to the point, I think that we've actually like, you know, pushed a lot of our, you know, and thank goodness actually for, you know, the, the one benefit of, you know, this current pandemic is that, you know, families have had this time to spend together. But, you know, you know, pre-pandemic, it was so competitive, right? You know, we had, um, you know, so many of our, our young people that were being like, you know, again, sh um, shuttled around, you know, to arenas and, you know, to music and to this and to that. And there was so much focus on the individual that it moved away from the community, a traditional value of community. And, you know, what is best for the greater good? Not only that, you know, rights versus responsibilities. We live in a society, the technological world always talks about, you know, well, I have a right to this. I have a right to that. This is my right, your right. This is their right, that's their right. But yet, what is overshadowed is the traditional value of responsibility, right? Is that, you know, that's always overshadowed, you know? So it's like, I have the responsibility. My responsibility as Pamela Toulouse is again, you know, to take care of my fur kids and it's to take care of my, again, the land here. It's also, you know, to be a, a person, you know, who models a good way of life, you know, so those are my responsibilities. My responsibilities come before the right. Okay, so that's what I mean. And again, feasting. Feasting is aligned with dates in the technological world. Well, we're going to have a feast. Why are we having a feast? Well, because of this particular day, right? 
And in our techno, in our traditional worlds, our feasts are aligned with spirit and land, right? So we have a feast. So someone makes that journey to the spirit world. We have a feast for them to celebrate their journey, you know, into that spirit world. You know, we have a feast seven days later, you know, to commemorate their journey, you know, from, from again, seven sleeps ago. And then a year later, we commemorate that journey or else, you know, all of a sudden someone has a dream, right? They have a dream and this dream is so prophetic that we're going to have a feast for that dream, you know, or else, you know, we're moving into our house, we're moving into a new house and we're going to feast for that house, right? There's always feasting, but it aligns with the spirit. So I want you to think about those. So which ones stand out to you? Which ones do you see? Like, you're like, my goodness, this is something that is so difficult, so difficult and that I see as a value that is, you know, very much real and alive. So this is what our children and youth face, right? This is what they face and especially our indigenous kids. So I'm going to give you the example because a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean by that? Some indigenous like, you know, Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek um, young people weren't raised in their culture, you know. Well, here's the thing what's interesting, right? And um, I always say it comes down to, you know, the DNA, right? So it's like what's interesting is that, you know, there's this evolving stream, right, of science. And we all know it. We all have our DNA. We have our genetic codes, right, our genetic codes of, you know, why our eyes are green, why our eyes are blue. And then there's also this other coding, right? And all of a sudden it's like, and even especially I noticed this with people that have been adopted. And then when they find their birth families, it's like, you know, they're like, oh, my goodness, you know, you walk just like auntie so-and-so or else, oh, my goodness, you know what? You have the same mannerisms as, you know, uncle, you know, or else uncle auntie. And it's like, wow, you know, it's the same laugh. And then it's like, wow, you know, and, you know, this is like meeting a birth family. And it's like you're talking about things, you know, that that normally would not be attributed to like, you know, particular like, you know, DNA. But the way that I look at it is that each one of us is the embodiment of all of our ancestors, right? We are the embodiment, not just their genetic codes, but of those memories as well. So, you know, when our kids, when Anishinaabek and Haudenosaunee and Métis kids and Inuit kids start to learn about their culture and language, they light up, right? And when they see, like, you know, them being honored, um, it's like, wow, you know, this, this is, this is me, this is my identity, you know, and my people, especially when they're young, you know, when, when our young people, you know, reach those adolescent years, you know, those are really called the wandering years, right? And those wandering years are all about challenging, challenging the status quo. And that's the role. So they may even turn their back on culture and language for a little while, but they always come back because that's just a part of their growth as well. So Moving forward in a good way, my beautiful friends. Okay, we're going to be coming back together because I'm coming almost to the end here, okay? Then I have one more thing that I'm going to share with you to think about. The greatest gift that we can give each other, all right? Give it to your grandkids, nieces and nephews, your dog, your cat, your bird, everybody. The greatest gift that you can give, um, again, um, you know, to your students, to yourself, you know, to your children, nieces, nephews, and to your friends is to know yourself, right? So who are you? Where did you come from? What is your ancestral story? That is all part of an equitable education, right? So, and that's why it is so important to know who you are. It is no surprise, you know, that Ancestry.com was in 2017 rated at a $2 billion industry. People want to know who they are. They want to know the hopes, challenges, and struggles of their ancestors. And when you find out, you know, especially like, you know, if you're not Indigenous, when you find out your ancestral story, you know, then you'll have that deeper connection and relationship with Indigenous peoples because you'll be like, aha, uh -huh, I get it. I get the connection. I get it because I know my story. I know it, right? And that's why it's the greatest gift. Embrace it. You know, find out who you are. And that is how relationships are built. And it is a gift. You know, that is something that, you know, even if you're teenagers, right? Even if you're teenagers, because they're in the wandering years. And if they're like, you know, ah, you know, you know, you're not lit, you know, that's not lit. And, you know, there's going to come a time when those ancestral stories, you know, are going to be so important to them. 
where they're, you know, they're always listening. They're listening, but they're they're doing their own thing. You know, they got their own like, you know, thing going on and it's important the work they do. So it's going to be important to know those things and to give that gift, you know, to yourself and to your family and to the world. Right. And then, you know, you can say to Indigenous peoples, I get it. I get why you have the connection to land. I understand, you know, at this level, because I know who I am. Right. So my beautiful friends. So become an accomplice, become an accomplice or an ally. All right. So what does that mean when we're teachers, educators, and when you're on the parent involvement committee, you're already an ally, right? Or an accomplice. And what that means is that you actually, you know, by by being on decision making bodies or being an educator is that what you are doing is that if you're working towards like, you know, um, you know, living a good way. Right. So working towards equity, towards inclusion, you know, to ensuring that every child, every young person can achieve what, you know, whatever their dream is. You know, whatever it is, you know, that if you're working towards that, then you are an ally. You're an accomplice if you are in like, you know, a, in a system where you're making those policies or you're breaking down the curriculum to make sure that voices are heard. And that is why, you know, having Robin Stotts here is so important because Robin Stotts, you know, is that example, you know, that's going to be that beautiful leader, that beautiful leader that needs to be supported, right? So not the person that's going to do it all, but that needs to be supported in their work, right? And, you know, you're thinking about, think about your great loves. If your great love, you know, is animal rescue or else like, you know, uh, preserving a wetland, you are still an ally and accomplice to Indigenous peoples, my friends, because if you're, um, again, committed to a cause that's about, you know, respecting the land and the earth and, you know, um, again, ensuring that, you know, that that each other, the more than humans, not just the humans are taken care of, you are an accomplice and an ally already. So my beautiful friends, I am going to stop there and I'm going to take some questions. I have a second part to the presentation, but that can just be shared because what it is, it's actually a really cool curriculum map. So I'm going to get the organizers to actually share it. And it's actually a series of curriculum tables. And it's really cool because it has all of the cool Indigenous contributions and where they fit appropriately in K-12. to So I give examples of the type of contributions you can highlight in kindergarten in grades 1 to 3, again, 4, 5, and 6, 7, and 8, 9, and 10, 11, and 12. And I also give ideas on strategies on how you can integrate them into, again, of course, uh, again, the subject areas, right? And not only that, I also give examples of the terms, you know, the types of words, right? The types of terms um, that students should be able to walk away with. So by the end of kindergarten, they should know Mother Earth, right? You know, they should know the word respect, you know, so things like that. So this curriculum map is something that I worked on um, a couple of years ago, I think it was. And it really is. It's a suggestion. It's looking at what, you know, developmentally, um, again, our learners are ready for at that age, right? What are they really ready for? And then giving examples of terms they should know, contributions you can highlight, and again, strategies, you know, that again, really do engage with, again, indigenous contributions to the world. So again, so they go all the way through my beautiful friends, right? So we'll just scroll, let's, let's scroll all the way to grade 12, because by the time grade 12 comes, you're gonna be like, wow, they know a lot. <laughs> so secondary, right? So by the time that, you know, students are done grade 11 and 12, these again, and this has been built, right? So this has been scaffolded. Um, uh, there's a scope and sequence from kindergarten on. So by the time they graduate, they would have a good sense of what these terms mean and they could use it, you know, very easily. Words like, you know, the local ones, of course, always first. You always start with that first. They should know, like, you know, Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe. Um, but they should also know these terms First Nations, Metis, Inuit, right? Treaty rights, you know, um, Indigenous rights, self ID. You know, they should know words like genocide, appropriation, and what the, you know, what the implications of those terms are. Not only that, contributions like road systems, drill bits, latex, 
right? You go all the way down to sign language, soft drink ingredients, you know, taxes, crampons, you know, evaporative cooling. And then again, subjects and potential strategies in English, math, science, history, geography, health and phys ed, music, drama, and visual arts. And in my other books, I have lesson plans, you know, that you can how to do it for mathematics and other subject areas. So my beautiful people, what I would like you to do is go to the chat, go to the chat. And I want you to share one thing, my friend. Okay, my friends, one thing that you learned this evening. If you're like, I learned that I make the best coffee in the world. I got up during your talk, made myself a coffee, which is makare abo in my language. Oh, and it was good. Okay, I don't know. But again, go to the chat, my friends. What is your key takeaway? And then I will have the organizers of this lovely evening take over because we have about 20 minutes at the most for questions. So my beautiful friends, I say miigwech to you and meow. <laughs> you can put on your photos. We can see your video and your beautiful faces. Now, beautiful friends, don't be afraid. Put on your videos. You're like, I already got my pajamas on. Don't bug me, girl. <laughs> yeah. So one key takeaway. So you can share it, you know, in the chat if you'd like, or else, you know what, you can just, you know, take yourself off mute and, and ask me a question or share it if you'd like. It's up to you. <laughs> Go ahead, you gorgeous people. <laughs> mm. Susan, I'm actually going to put the link uh, to the American Indian contributions to the world in the chat, my friend. So I'm going to put that in That is awesome because I think as parents and as trustees and in all of our roles in this whole system, we need to learn more. And I think that, you know, I got to this age and didn't know some of those things that had been contributed to the world. And I feel like I need to know more. So thank well, you. Miigwech, I've put it in the side and I'm going to let you know, it's not, this is a virus free PDF. Okay. Virus free. I'm telling you right now. So when you actually go, um, uh, so when you go to that link, it'll actually open up the PDF right away. So I have like a little background on that. So that Mexico resistance. So what happened is that the writers, Kiyoki and Porterfield, um, you know, have, have, um, their encyclopedia is no longer being printed. So what they did is that, um, um, so it's not being printed. So what they did is that they took their initial copy of the book and they put it online for free because the um, uh, one of the copyright folks, Facts on File, who actually, because it was a separate series of encyclopedias like science and tech and they had like architecture. So what they did is they took their original one and they said, listen, if they're not going to publish it anymore, we don't want the information to be lost because it doesn't belong to Facts on File. It belongs to the 500 nations and uh, again, all the non-Indigenous peoples, again, who want to learn. So you go to that, it's there. It's really neat because it has pictures and descriptions and time periods and who did it. And it's really neat. Ooh, look at the kitty. <laughs> Christine's cat. Yes. Don't worry, Christine. My pup's in the next room. <laughs> yep. So any comments at all? Anything that you, again, like, you know, um, again, learned um, or else a question. If you want to, you know, take your mute off. I've got my water going right now. Yeah. You want to share something? That's great. If not, you're like, you know what? I'm done. It's now 20 to 8 and I want to go for my walk now. Then, you know, Bamam P and Ona, you know, Bamam P is uh, Nishnabe for see you later, and Ona is by in uh, Ungwe Hungwe, or else Haudenosaunee. That's Robin's, Robin's language. <laughs> Questions, comments, something you'd like to share? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Danielle. I wanted to say chi miigwech to you for your ongoing generosity and sharing your your culture, your knowledge um, with so many people. You probably don't remember, but back in 2014, I cold call emailed you 
to request an interview for an AQ course that I was doing. And you were so generous and didn't hesitate and you responded right away. And that to me is just an indication of, of your character and your generosity. And uh, I just wanted to say Chima Gwetch. Well, Chimmy Gwetch, Danielle, and I really appreciate you, like, you know, t um, being brave and uh, and humbling me in a good way by offering, you know, that that story and, uh, you know, um, from 2014. So really, me, Gwetch, Danielle, and also for, for having the courage to reach out. I always respond. Um, I have a new email, though, because I am. I am retired as of tomorrow. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so I really am. So. May 1st is going to be my first day that I wake up. Well, semi-retired because uh, I still have stuff that I do. Yeah. So my beautiful friends. Yeah, it'll be good. So I've got, I believe there's, it was Lisa. So let me go take a look at the hands. I have a very different view because I don't have the actual app. <laughs> I joined from a browser. Yep. So go ahead. I've got my participants. Lisa. Hi, Pamela. Thank you so much. I am in my casual wear, so I was reluctant to put my camera on at this point, but uh, I'm, I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with you. I put my question in the chat box, um, but I think about this often when we talk about equitable practices. Um, I often think of um, engaging families, and yep. there are lots of uh, common ways we engage families that are great and wonderful um, in schools already, yep. but I also know that we need to um, push ourselves to think differently and to think beyond what we already know and so I was wondering in your experience if you could comment a little bit about um, unique ways or or just points for reflection when engaging families yeah so here's my here's uh really when it comes to engaging families and then Robin can build upon this because she's going to be like yes yes this is how we do it so what it like really what it is is that instead of asking families to come to the school because you have to remember a lot of our people had very uh negative experiences right with schools well with most institutions that were non-indigenous um hospitals you name it um so it's always good to go to the community rather than trying to get the community to come to you and it's always good to follow the protocols in a good way so um you know feasting you know and uh and working with like you know local community um again caterers so say for example it could even be at the friendship center you know so an example like that we're hosting a community feast to come out and uh and meet you so it, it's about going to the community rather than the community coming to you because there is a big hesitancy i'm telling you like uh my parents were were very um hesitant myself um uh, I went to uh, what what they call federal a federal day school, but they know them as Indian day schools now, right? So I went to an Indian day school on my reserve, and um, and uh, it, it was not good. Yeah, so so there's there's a fear of that. So even it's still there, even like you know that we try to engage, but also it's using again like um, things like uh, you know again the the community resources. You know, well, who is the like the education counselor for that community? You know, who's the indigenous education counselor? So it's about reaching out and, you know, and also participating in activities. So, you know, even if there's like, you know, some type of like a virtual activity, you know, going on with the community, you know, don't be afraid to attend and to introduce yourself. But you introduce yourself by starting off with who you are as a human being first, right? As a two legged, I'm a mother, you know, I'm a parent. I'm a grandma, auntie, you know, I'm a fur parent, you know, I love like, you know, I love being outdoors. So we start off, you know, from the from uh, the, the human part of us first before we go into the professional stance. Yeah. But yeah, going to the community. It works. I remember 20, almost 28 years ago, my first grade seven, my first classroom, grade seven uh, on Manitoulin Island. We, we had um, a group of kids that transferred from a different school. And um, so I taught at an on, on reserve school and I ended up like, you know, going to a couple community bingos, like I really did in this community called Shishiguaning. And I contacted the education council and I said, listen, we got your kids transferring from another school now coming to Lakeview. And I want, you know, I, I want to have those relationships in a good way because I knew things were tough for those kids. So I did. I was in the community and, and I did. I, I went to a couple bingo games. Never won. But uh, you know what? <laughs> but that's what it is. It's about 
it's about the relationship, right? It's about, um, you know, it's those initial steps and those initial steps of, of um, showing that, that there's, go that there's a trust. Yeah. Cause that's really, that's the hardest thing to build is trust. Yeah. So those are what work and also basic language, you know, basic language, you know, the, the segos, you know, segoli, meow, you know, me guach. Like it's, you know, it's, um, you know, tanse, all of those things, marci, you know, which is again, machif, um, again, the machif language, met metis language. So that's what I mean by using the language too, right? Yeah. So those are some ways to, again, to engage. And don't be afraid. I've lived in, you know what? I put on a dress for you folks tonight, okay? <laughs> I've been living in a pajamas for over a year, <laughs> literally. My husband's like, what's going on tonight? You're dressed. You know, I was like, I got an event, okay? Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry, partner. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, I really like to take a picture with you. Are you guys all able to see that? I've kind of been playing around with the scene. Are you all able to see what I see on my screen, like an auditorium style with Pamela with us? Can you all see that? There are it, different ways. I think if you hit on the triple ellipse and you hit the together mode, then you're in, in an auditorium. But other people, depending on what mode they've hit, they would see a different screen. So mine, when I, when I touched yeah. it, it said it will change it for everybody. So I'd like to take a picture if that's okay. I'm, I'm creating our newsletter. Pamela, you are um, a celebrity in our communities, and I really would love to capture a picture with you if that's okay. Um, so just for the people who I'm on the screen, there's a number of people who are on my screen. If yeah. you're not wanting to be in the picture, I just ask that maybe you um, turn your camera off. But for everybody else, can you turn your camera on? And I'm going to try and get as many people in the picture. And just so you know, I'm asking you now if you're okay for our um, Indigenous Services newsletter, if we could have you um, show your faces. I just like to take a picture because right now I can see about 20 of you sitting in an auditorium and I'd really like to capture as many people in the picture as possible. Um, but I might have Joe help me. I'm new to this device I have in front of me. Are you able to screenshot Joe or can I take a picture? Do you know I will take a screen. I will take a screenshot for you. Absolutely. That would be great. Yeah, but I see, I don't see know more, people, more people joining us. If there's a couple of more, I have about eight or nine empty seats here. Can you guys see what I see? Oh, I love I have a little a little child in there. Our, our audience is getting bigger. If everybody wants to um, show their face, that would be great. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say on the count of three, everybody takes give us some smiles. Let's put that little guy back in the picture. There was a little guy. Can we put him in <laughs> with us? It would be nice to have a child in with us, and I'd like to capture a picture. So oh, I'm going to say on the count of three, maybe Pamela, you can put your hands up like this so we can see who you are. There's there's our author. So I'm going to say on the count of three and whoever's taking a picture, that would be great and send it to me. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, Andre. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Send it to robin.stots at Grand Erie and I'll put it in our newsletter. Uh, you, uh, Pamela, you are definitely a celebrity in my books. I have read numerous of your publications throughout the years. And, and I'm very pleased to hear your talk once more and this evening. Yeah. I so I'm sorry I cut you off, but I'm going to I'm going to mute myself now. I just really want to thank again, like, you know, the, the parent involvement committee, you know, for, for inviting me and, uh, you know, for, again, just, it, it's been a really amazing experience and be able to see people in their home and to know that you got your grandkids going and you're like, this is what makes me laugh. And, you know, that humor and, uh, to be able to, you know, to see your partners pop into the picture once in a while, you know, so it's been um, I just really want to thank all of you and to thank also, you know, the school board, you know, for making this possible. And, um, you know, Robin, thank you. Those are very humbling words. I just, I've been very lucky. I've had almost 28 years in education and, um, you know, have had, uh, you know, been very lucky to, you know, to, to learn, really to learn, right? I've got to learn with some of the most amazing people in the entire universe. And I felt that every year. I just thought this just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, so miigwech everybody for this evening and, and uh, you know, a big nyawa and stay safe, you know, and just take care of yourselves and don't ever apologize for self-care. Don't ever apologize for self-care. Tell your partner. Yeah. Tell a friend. I need to take care of myself today. Yeah. Yeah. I need an hour for me. Yeah. So don't apologize for that during this pandemic because it's not just COVID-19. It's a pandemic of isolation. Yeah. So don't ever apologize for self-care. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> so I have to ask Pamela one, one question. I, I'm yeah. being mindful of our time here. Um, as you retire, Mm -hmm. Does that mean you will be more apt to travel and be around to to in service? It would be really wonderful to bring you into some of the classrooms here, uh, whether it be virtual or whether it be other means into some with some of the students. Is that something you'd be interested in? So that is something quite, quite, you asked my question, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're retiring and we'll have more time, I have to ask. Well, I'm, I'm mad at Joe now. Yeah. I'm mad at Joe there because he's trying to like, you know, he's talking about fastball there. Joe, I'd hate to tell you, but I was a darn good fastball player back in my day. Oh, mip toe, I could run fast, my oh. friend. <laughs> I think I think I think I remember seeing you play way back when. Yeah, Sagmuk I used to play for, but you know what? I'm a little bit chubbier now. Takes a little <laughs> bit more effort to get around them bases. Yeah. <laughs> but uh no i am i'm retiring but i still um uh so there's yeah so i retired from laurentian university so most people know the story behind it laurentian university is bankrupt yeah so yeah so laurentian uh university is the only public university only public university or college in all of canada that has ever filed for ccaa protection they filed february 1st they're bankrupt so they had to cut and you know what it's 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 you know it happens and well it doesn't happen it just it happened here so i made the decision to retire because i was in a position to retire um because if i retire that means another younger junior faculty member can keep their job that's why yeah yeah so you got to do what you got to do right so they they cut uh it was 70 programs and um 130 30 positions, 80 faculty. Yeah, I wasn't one of those faculty. I opted to leave. Yeah, because if you opted to leave, there was some some um, some feeling that that you could actually save a junior faculty. Like I was there for 21 years. Yeah, so so I was like, no, no, there's a there's space for somebody else. Yeah, so that's why. So I still I I work as a consultant. Yeah, but um, I am going to like enjoy about a month off and read read <laughs> read good smut like Anne rice yeah <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> so, so i'm gonna be mindful of the time because it does say i did get a, a notice saying there are five minutes or yes. a couple of minutes left so i don't know if we have a planned closing if there's not um i can i can um bring our meeting to a close would you do that please so um, I, I don't have a traditional closing, closing, but I just wanted to say, Pamela, uh, again, you're a celebrity in my books, and I do have a number of your publications, including your ministry documents on my shelf and have used them over the years. Um, as an educator myself of 30 years, I have used your documents in my classrooms, in my schools as a district teacher, and um, I will continue to do that. So I look forward, I'm sorry about your retirement. I look forward to knowing that you might be a little bit more available for us. And we look forward to connecting with you in the future. And um, I, I, I enjoyed your talk. And I look forward to future talks and Nyawa for being a part of the Grand Erie District School Board. And um, for all of those parents who joined us and education staff, I see some Six Nations staff on the site too. So <laughs> good to see those people. I told them when I was leaving Six Nations that I'd see you, but uh, it was good to see all the faces here tonight. And whoever took the picture, I would love it. I am in the process of working on our newsletter. I'd like to add all your beautiful faces my friends, as um, as Pamela would say, Nyawa Goa Chimigwech for joining us today. And it's been a great evening. And um, Ona, everybody, see you again. Bye, Mumpy.
Mama Good Pete, night. take care. Keep stay safe. Good night, folks. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. Stay well. Thank you, everybody. Good night.